U.S. to pursue my education and to pursue a career path. Uh, like many immigrants, I went to a really good school here and studied architectural design and began on a career path and was living the American dream. And I worked for Fortune 500 companies uh, for a short time. I even worked at the World Trade Center towers for a good four years, and I was on the 106th floor of those towers. So I had intimate knowledge of Lower Manhattan, and my husband was the imam of a mosque very close to Ground Zero, about 12 blocks from there. So Lower Manhattan and Tribeca and that entire neighborhood was our neighborhood. And but before 9-11, my husband and I had started the American Society for Muslim Advancement partly to address the issue of faith and modernity and to be a place where young Muslims who are exploring their spirituality could find a home, a place where they could ask really tough questions, a place where they could not feel uh, you know, that they were, judgment was being passed on them. Because I had struggled in my own spirituality, so I wanted to create a home for others who were you know, following that same trajectory. And we were doing very well until 9-11 happened. And then our organization had to immediately go from being an in-reach organization to an outreach organization. And we began speaking to churches and synagogues and think tanks and universities and schools and law enforcement agencies. And, and we were in demand and people wanted to know who are Muslims and why do you hate us? And, all the questions that really we weren't prepared to even answer because we were so in shock of what had happened and in shock that somebody who called themselves a Muslim could do this. I feel that we lost a little bit of our innocence and many Muslims could not imagine that somebody who called themselves a Muslim would do something like this and uh, for a long time we didn't know how to react. Because we didn't react in the robust manner that Americans would have liked us to react, even though we did react, we sent statements out. People thought that silence is complicit. Why aren't they going out on the streets? Why aren't they, you know, doing like what they've seen in Tahrir Square now? Why aren't they out there marching? And what people didn't realize is that we were in shock. We're a minority community. Uh, we are trying to integrate ourselves. Uh, and we had not built the kind of institutions that needed to be in place for us to be able to react in that way and uh, limited resources. So we found ourselves in the middle of all this and uh, the expectations were very high. So we just found ourselves working what we call in America 24-7. That's what it felt like. We didn't refuse any engagement. Uh, we went wherever people asked us, even if it was a church of 20 people or it was a venue of a thousand people. It didn't matter because if people wanted us to come and explain, we were there. Ironically, the one thing that was occupying the minds of Americans, which is extremism, has waned because what happened in the Arab Spring has reshaped the way people think of Muslims now because they always thought of Muslims as being extremists and people who didn't want democracy, people who wanted just an you know, Islamic State like Taliban, and that is what they you know, wanted in their societies and communities. And then they saw powerful images of people coming out on the streets looking like their own children with little babies and strollers and young men coming out and saying, we want democracy, you know, we want freedom, all the things that resonate with Western people, they were hearing. And those images were too powerful, and I think it reshaped the perception that at least Americans had of Muslims. And that was the single biggest blow to the extremists, was this revolt all over the Arab world of wanting to take matters into their own hands, because the extremists had done nothing for them. always wanted to create a center that was um, a place of worship, but also a place of service, such as the YMCA had become a place where Bible classes were being held, but also athletics and 
uh, a place that would be open to the general public uh, and where people could come through various levels of interest. And uh, this is a model that has been very successful, uh, successfully achieved by the Christians in this country and has now become a template for all over the world called the YMCAs. And the Jewish community followed suit and they created the JCCs, Jewish Community Centers, modeled similarly after that, but really talking, you know, expressing Jewish life in America. And we knew that Muslims would have to create a similar institution, uh, uh, you know, a place where critical thinking about Islam can take place, where global issues can be explored, um, where interfaith collaboration can be taken to a whole new level. And we had called it the Cordoba House because we wanted to sort of harken back to that era when Muslims, Christians, and Jews were sharing knowledge with one another, were inspired by each other's philosophies, and, and you know, and it was a culture um, of learning and, and um, expressing faith, uh, not in a competitive way, but really in, an, in, a, in a more uh, compatible way. So that was the original idea, and when we proposed it uh, at a site that was in our neighborhood, not close to Ground Zero, but in our neighborhood, only blocks away from where we were, uh, it was very quickly embraced by the local community because they saw the benefit and the merit of it. And But it was the opposition that is determined to ensure that Muslims don't, don't take root in this country in the same way that you know Christians and Jews have taken root in the sense that we should not be allowed to define ourselves in this country, that we should remain a marginalized, minimized, ghettoized community, well that's just not who we are. That's not the reality of us. We are very well integrated, we are highly successful, and to prevent us from integrating is, is only going to, is, is doomed to fail. We found ourselves in the midst of a national controversy. We found ourselves uh, becoming an election issue. And all of a sudden we found ourselves embroiled in the kind of controversy that we had never even imagined for ourselves. It's something unimaginable. You know, uh, we, we were private citizens and we were, were treated as if we were public servants. And um, it, was, it was an experience that now that I look back at it, I'm glad I had that experience because I learned a lot from it. And in some ways, I learned a lot about human nature. I learned a lot about the struggle of others which I had never, um, you know, I'd fairly, I'd been empowered by everybody in my family. I had never, I was never, you know, marginalized, minimized by anyone. Uh, but I began to identify with the struggle of others, the blacks in this country, the civil rights movement, the suffrage movement. And I'm thankful for that because it's made me a smarter, stronger person. The dream is still very much alive. And um, the architect in me wants to build this thing some point in our lives. We have not, uh, we are very committed to it because more than ever this type of center is needed. More than ever we need to bring people of religions together to really work together as a coalition for the overall good of society. Mm -hmm.